We're here today on RealAirCulture.com. We're at the Tiffin Conference in Lethbridge. Right now we're joined by Alex Avery. Welcome today, Alex. Thanks, Sean. Okay, Alex, uh, where are you from and what do you do? I'm with the Hudson Institute's Center for Global Food Issues. You mentioned tobacco, because I've heard a lot of uh, food activists um, say in, in the U.S. that, uh, that you know, with uh, GMO food today, those, G those, those trade provider companies are no different than t the tobacco companies earlier in the century. What, what do you, what do you well, see? You know, this is what's fascinating because really they're not, pro they're not promoting any science that says biotech foods are unhealthy. What, what they're trying to get you on is that the corporations are bad. The food corporations, the ag companies that sell seeds and inputs are bad. And, and, and you know, it's an odd argument because we don't, as a general society, we don't get often caught up into arguments that, uh, outside of food, that corporations are bad or, or, or somehow an evil to the world. I mean, there's a lot of demonization, obviously, in a free market economy, and some groups are going to take on pharmaceutical companies, and, you know, we, we all have to be wary about vested interests. But on the whole, the places in the world that have no corporations are not places with good environmental or food safety records. And, in fact, it's the reputation factor that... that causes corporations to act responsibly. So, so really, they're not making a food safety or an environmental argument. They're making a economic, right. structural argument and, and suggesting that their system would somehow rid the world of the problem of big food companies. Well, how? Yeah. I mean, because organic, the organic food sector is full of food corporations. I mean, corporations are what? This is what really fascinates me sociologically about this is, you know, I, I go to college campuses and I say, what's a corporation? They, well, this is, you know, the third entity, blah, 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 blah. It's a business democracy. And think about it fundamentally. A group of people who all want to put a little bit of money in to, to have a business, and how do you make decisions in a large organization like that? You set up a board, you have elections, you know, you have a, we have a process, and it's a way to run large businesses democratically. And yet somehow we're being trying, try, tried to convince by a certain sectors in the media that this is evil or inherently wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, I could... Personally, I could care less about any individual corporation. Uh, or, or I, I could care less about any specific technology and the relationship with the corporation, but I do care about the technologies. And so, I do care about making an environment where corporations can't thrive when the alternatives are communism, national socialism. Uh, history has shown to be far less amenable to uh, progressive, forward-thinking, societally benefiting Structures. So how do you think we got, one thing that I find is that when you talk to people that accept biotech, they won't tell you that uh, we need to get rid of organic, right? It's not no, a, I'm not at all anti-organic. It's not an all or none thing. What I find is from the people that advocate for organic is that it is an all or, or none thing. How do you, like, how did we get to that point? And, you know, this is where I think the media has revealed its true colors. The environmental food and food media has revealed its true colors because... You know, everywhere else in the media, we're told about talk. That we, we're, we're, you know, we're told to be tolerant. We're uh, uh, open to diverse viewpoints. I'm not anti-organic, but I'm painted as anti-organic. I don't want to put organic farmers out of business or prohibit consumers from buying organic foods. But somehow, I'm the bad guy in this discussion when I say you guys are unethically trying to force your competitors out of business and poisoning the waters and trying to put me out of business through owner's regulations. So, you know, it's, it's funny. It's heads we lose, tails we lo you win, you know? I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's a no-win situation. And it, again, I think that we mis we, in agriculture, we make the mistake of thinking that the discussion is really about food safety or really about uh, environmental impacts. Uh, when really what's the argument that's occurring on the media level, the level with the reporters, which means what they're going to report to consumers is the role of corporations, the role of private industry, the role of regulatory agencies, and how much technology are we willing to, quote, tolerate or allow uh, corporations to use to manipulate the market, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, you know, it's a, sociologically, it's fascinating. Professionally, it's frustrating. And I say that because biotechnology, I'm a, I'm, I got into plant physiology and plant science because of biotechnology. It is without doubt and will be the most powerful tool humanity has to make food safer, to make our farming practices more sustainable and less impactful to the environment, and to really tackle the 21st century food challenge. And yet the technology is demonized 
because it's somehow connected to private enterprise. And this is crazy. You know, uh, here we, they want us, and there's a perfect example of this, is insect-resistant biotech crops. Organic farmers started spraying Bacillus thuringiensis concoctions, which is a bacteria related to anthrax, and it produces a toxin that basically opens bleeding pores in the insect guts that eat the plants. And organic farmers and other farmers figured out that they could take these Bt bacteria, put them in a sugar solution, grow them up, and spray them on their crops, and they were effective with insecticide. Problem was is that you had to spray every four, five, eight days because the proteins break down quickly. So there was a lot of tractor fuel, a lot of farmer time, a lot of soil unnecessary soil compaction because of all the activities on the fields. And the biotech guys said, look, let's take the, the gene for just that insect toxin protein, which is harmless to fish, harmless to mammals, harmless to birds. Organic farmers have been using it since the 1950s. Let's take the gene for that and have it expressed only in the tissues of the plants the insects eat so that there's always a lethal dose. You won't have as much development of pest resistance and you'll save all that tractor fuel and soil compaction and all of that. It'll make agriculture less toxic to the environment, more sustainable, uh, and, and it's a win-win for everyone. And yet somehow, the organic farmers had no qualms and no, component, no hesitation to proclaim their use of BT was just fine, but if a corporation was involved in incorporating it into a plant to make it more effective and sustainable, it was somehow horrible. It's as if they want their cake and eat it too, and the media is allowing them to get away with it. And yet, as a society, we should want all farmers to use the least impactful. Anything that will help get technologies that are this good to be used by more and more farmers is a benefit, and we're fighting it. 